Welcome, First Presbyterian Church, those of you who are joining us here in the sanctuary, as well as those of you who are watching uh, via Zoom. We are glad that you're here, whatever way you are here. Uh, for those who are here in the sanctuary, we ask that uh, if you get up to go to the restroom or when you leave, that you put your mask on, but while you are remaining in your socially distant seats, you are welcome to remove the mask uh, as it makes it easier to, to breathe and do some other things. Um, those of you who are watching at home, uh, we'd love if you would drop us a, a message or a note in the chat feature, just letting us know that you're here. Um, and if you have any questions or if anything is going wrong, you can also type that in the chat. And Greg Gates today is here watching our, our chat box so that he can let us know if, if there's anything that we need to address. Uh, those of you who are here in the building, if you have any questions or prayer requests uh, or anything like that, um, feel free to, to speak to me after the worship service or let me know. You can also use your cell phones and dial in to the Zoom meeting or to our church website where you can post those things as well. We've removed all of the hymnals and all of the bulletins. Um, we encourage and invite everyone both here and at home to bring your own Bibles uh, to worship so that you can follow along when you can. Um, if that's not possible, you can always look something up on your cell phone. And of course, we'll do our best to put as much as we can up on the slides uh, to help you along in the worship service. En el silencio del, de la mañana, la luz del nuevo día me bebecía. Percibo los primeros movimientos del viento y los primeros sonidos de las criaturas en el silencio de mi corazón. Escuchas los ángeles que hay en mí los tremores, las esperanzas que ser serían del interior y los dudas que turban mi alma al comienzo de este día, oh Dios, antes que se pierda y los cuedur de la noche, en los acapaciones del día, abrime el tesoro de mi, de mi ser interior, para que en mi, en mi, en mi dio de los asuntos de este día, recua la sabadura aseguareme de nuevo que mis origines se encuentran en ti. Aseguareme de nuevo que mis profundidades reales son tuyas. <tose> today from our Jesus Storybook Bible is called The Treasure Hunt, and it's from Matthew 13. We like treasure hunts, don't we? I Do love you, treasure hunts. You like digging for buried treasure? Mm -hmm. Okay. I buried, I buried so here it goes. the other day, but I dug it up. One day, Jesus was telling people about God's kingdom. God's kingdom is wherever God is king, Jesus told them. It's wherever God is in charge. It's where he fills your heart up with his forever happiness. And you stop running away from him, and you love him. But sometimes people couldn't understand things very well, so Jesus helped them by telling them stories called parables. Jesus said, God's kingdom is a hidden treasure. It's like a hidden treasure. And then he told them this story. Once upon a time, there was a man working in a field digging. So there he is digging, but what he doesn't know is that in the field there is buried treasure. So, dig, 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 clink, clink, clonk, uh-oh, his shovel hits something hard. Hello, what's this? He picks it up, 
dusts it off, and what is it? It's a chest. It's rusted and locked, but creak. He pries it open, and what he sees inside takes his breath away. Beautiful, glittering, gleaming, twinkling, sparkling, precious jewels. It is a treasure chest. He wants that treasure. He needs to get that treasure. He must have that treasure somehow, even if he has to sell everything he has so that he can pay for it. He quickly buries the treasure again, runs home, and sells everything he has. He takes the money from the sale and goes and buys that field. Now he owns the field and the treasure that is buried in it. He runs back and digs up the treasure again. Jesus said, coming home to God is as wonderful as finding a treasure. You might have to dig before you find it. You might have to look before you see it. You might even have to give up everything you have to get it. But being where God is, being in his kingdom, that's more important than anything in all the world. It's worth anything you have to give up, Jesus told him, because God is the real treasure. God had a treasure too, of course, a treasure that was lost long, long ago. What was God's treasure, his most important thing, the thing God loved best in all the world? God's treasure was his children. It was why Jesus had come into the world to find God's treasure and pay the price to win them back. And Jesus would do it, even if it cost him everything he had. The end. <laughs> Psalm 96. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be revered above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into the courts. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. Tremble before him all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. The world is firmly established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the seas roar and all that fills it. Let the fields exult and everything in it. Then shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Let us pray. Lord, may these, the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. On September 11th, 2004, the day my eldest son, Grady, was born, I gained an incredible new superpower. The ability to tell dad jokes. On December 6th, 2007, when my daughter, Abby, was born, I leveled up. And on December 16th, 2011, when my youngest son Jonah was born, I became a Jedi dad joke master. Since today is Father's Day, I will now indulge in this ancient, sacred art on behalf of dads everywhere. Why are elevator jokes so good? because they work on many levels. Why do eye doctors live so long? Because 
They dilate. Dilate. Why does a chicken coop have two doors? Because if it had four doors, it would be a chicken sedan. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator. What do you call a broken can opener? A can't opener. And this one is particularly appropriate for dads of my particular age and stage of life. What do you call a group of rabbits walking backwards? A receding hairline. No need to applaud. It's okay. It's all right. Last Sunday, last Sunday we looked at Psalm 86 in our summer sermon series on the Psalms. Psalm 86, and we learned that it can be used as a model for how to pray. This Sunday, we're going to skip forward 10 Psalms and look at Psalm 96, which functions as a model for how to worship God. I'm going to be honest. As a pastor, I often have people come up to me and say, Pastor, can you help me learn how to pray better? But I've yet to ever have anyone come up to me and say, Pastor, can you teach me how to worship better? It's just not something that we think about very much, even though worship of God is pretty fundamental to who we are and what we do as people of faith. But this question, how should we worship has certainly been on my mind a whole lot the last four months. You see, four months ago, we thought we had the whole worship thing down pat. You come to church Sunday morning at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock, you sing a few songs, you say a few prayers, stand up, sit down, shake hands, listen to the sermon, say a few more prayers, sing a few more songs, stand up, sit down, pass the offering plate, go home. I'm only exaggerating a little bit. But then came COVID-19, and suddenly you couldn't shake hands or pass the offering plate anymore. And then a few weeks later, you couldn't even come to the church building, to the sanctuary. How do you sing songs together when everyone is in a different location and their internet connections are all three seconds out of sync with each other? How do I preach a sermon? when I can't look at the faces in my congregation and see the joys and the sorrows, the confusion or the understanding reflected in their eyes. Well, we struggled through it, doing our best, trying new things, making new mistakes and new discoveries every week. Then churches started to reopen, ours included, but it was never just as simple as, well, let's go back to what we did before. In a world where it is still not safe for some people to come back to church, that just isn't going to work for us as a community. And last week, I learned from some of my friends in the military, and we have several here in El Paso, that their employers don't always consider it safe for them or their families to participate in social media or online worship services for reasons of national security. So it's not enough to just pick one or the other online, in person. We have to do both. And then how do you hold together? different communities, worshiping in two very different ways with different rules and different sets of expectations. And then you add to that problems that we had with worship before COVID-19, like different preferences in musical style, different political, social, generational, economic backgrounds. And yes, I would absolutely love to hear what the Bible has to say about how we should worship God in this crazy, frustrating, ever-changing world. Psalm 96, verse 1. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. 
There it is right there in the first verse. Rule number one, it's okay to do something new, something different, something unfamiliar, something that doesn't look like the way your parents and your grandparents worshipped God. The world changes and our worship changes and grows with it. Sing to the Lord a new song. And yet, there are some things that don't change that cannot change no matter how much the world changes, like whom we worship. Sing to the Lord a new song. Or who is responsible for doing the worship? Sing to the Lord all the earth, not just those who can safely come to the building, or not just those with a fast enough internet connection, but all. We all have to find ways to worship God that makes sense for our context and for our situation, and we have to do that together as a community. There is no break, there is no acceptable excuse to just sit things out until our situation gets better. Another thing that doesn't change, according to Psalm 96, is how we are to worship God. In fact, this is repeated twice in the very first verse. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Now, as a preacher, it's very tempting for me to say, you know, the most important part of worshiping God is the sermon, of course. But over and over in the Psalms and many other places in the Bible, the most emphasized aspect of worshiping God is communal singing. That means not just the praise band or the musicians, not just those who are here in the building, not just those who can carry a tune in a bucket. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Now, I'm going to say something that some of you aren't going to like. If you didn't sing today, if all you did was listen to other people sing, you didn't worship God. God doesn't care whether you sing on pitch or in rhythm, loudly or softly, the whole song or just part of it. God created you and God created your voice and God loves to hear your voice. Even if the person sitting next to you or your family or your neighbors or maybe your cats think you're weird. Actually, you probably are weird, but that's because you're Presbyterian, not because you can't sing. Now, there is, of course, more to worship than just singing. Verse 2 and verse 3 of Psalm 96, bless his name, tell of his salvation from day to day, declare his glory among the nations. All of these are things we do with our spoken words. This is what we do when we pray, when we preach, when we share God's peace with each other, or when we read the scriptures together. It's also what we do when we tell someone, hey, I think you would have really liked the psalm that we talked about in my church today. Let me tell you about it, or let me send you a link to the service. In both of these types of worship, singing to the Lord and declaring the Lord's goodness, notice that the actions, the subject of our worship, is still God, not us. Often people will come up to me and tell me, and and they think this is a compliment, they say, you know, I love worship. I come to church. I need worship. I come to church or I watch the service online because it fills me up. It makes me feel good about myself and it prepares me for the week ahead. All those things are good and I hope you do feel that way after you leave worship, but it's important to remind ourselves sometime that all those things are secondary. Worship is not primarily something we do for ourselves, even though there is a tangential benefit to us. Worship is something we do primarily for God and for the world that God created. 
If you are here today in the building or watching online, you are not the audience and I am not the performer. We, all of us together, are the performers and God is the audience. The job of those who lead worship, me, the musicians, those doing the readings or the videos, our job is to remind everyone of our lines, to remind us of the part that we are supposed to play, but then we all play that part together. We all together create what becomes worship through our participation, and that's the gift that we offer to God. I like to imagine God after watching our worship service from the heavens, taking a snapshot of it, however messy or messed up or chaotic it might be, and posting our worship service on his refrigerator in heaven and looking at it throughout the week saying, look what they did for me. Isn't this beautiful? In the same way that you can look as a parent at a scribbled crayon thing that's a mess and say, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Verses 4 and 5 in Psalm 96 talk about idols. God is to be revered above all gods, for all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Now, most of us don't typically think of ourselves as idol worshipers. That sounds like something that people did long ago in strange and foreign cultures. But here's the truth. All of us, when we gather for worship in whatever place we gather, we have this tendency to bring with us a thousand cares and worries and distractions, things that we unconsciously place above God in our hearts. I've often heard it said that if you want to know what your idols are, take a look at where you spend most of your time, your money, your thoughts, your energy. Those are your idols. For some of you, that may be the pursuit of material possessions, or money itself, or food, or status, or your career, or your children, your family. None of those things are bad in themselves. And actually, I hope you do devote time and energy and money to your family. But all of those things, including family, are temporary and fleeting. When you lose all your money, when you lose your job, when your children grow up and move out, if you have centered your entire life around those things, you will be lost. All of these things, no matter how good they are, can become idols if you raise them on too high a pedestal. But if you center yourself and your time, your money, your thoughts, your energy on the one who created all of these things, the one who gives and takes all of these things, then you will at the very least be able to put them all into the proper perspective, appreciate them all the more, and ultimately, I think, be better at them. Worshiping God means putting God first above even the most important and urgent things in our lives. Verses 7 and 8 speak of ascribing things to God. That's a word we don't use too often, but ascribe, the original Hebrew word here is yahav, which simply means to give. What do we give to God in worship? Well, according to Psalm 96, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. That's a little bit confusing. How do you give God glory and strength in worship? Well, glory in Hebrew is kavod, which is often translated as wealth or abundance in other places. In other words, it's what you have above and beyond what you need, your excess. Give that to God as part of your worship. And strength is in Hebrew, oz, which always has the sense of authority or power. And that's something you give up to God, your authority, your power, your control, especially in worship. These two things, incidentally, 
are the things that most of us have the hardest time giving up to anyone, let alone God. Our stuff and our control. Please remember that control part when worship doesn't go the way that you or I plan for it to go, and that has happened often in the last few weeks. Remember that worship always goes exactly the way God intends for it to go, even if that looks a little chaotic or messy. There's one more thing that we're supposed to ascribe or give to God, and we find that in verse 9. Worship the Lord in holy splendor, tremble before him, all the earth. Only tremble is a pretty lousy translation of the Hebrew word hul, which sometimes means to shake or to writhe around. But more often, when you see that word in scripture, it means to whirl around, to move around gracefully, to dance. Now, if you thought singing to the Lord in worship was awkward, believe me, I'm with you on the dancing part. But no one said that worship would be easy, not even for the pastor. And if you figure out how to make that dancing thing work, you let me know. I asked Patty today if she wanted to have the Zumba folks come and do Zumba as part of worship. She gave me a strange look. The final four verses of Psalm 96 speak of the kind of worship that goes beyond people, beyond prayers and sermons and buildings, and incorporates the entirety of heaven and earth. Let the heavens be glad, let the sea roar, and all that fills it, let the field exult, and everything in it, then shall all of the trees of the forest sing for joy. Those final words from Psalm 96 inspired a young Presbyterian pastor named Maltby Babcock in the late 19th century. When he would take long walks in upstate New York near his home, which was close to Niagara Falls, and he would tell his wife that he was going out to see the Father's world. On one of those long walks, he composed or began to compose a poem, which was a paraphrase of this psalm, Psalm 96. All nature sings, and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world. I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees, of skies and seas. His hand the wonders wrought. This is my Father's world. The birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white. Declare their maker's praise. This is my father's world. He shines in all that's fair. In the rustling grass, I hear him pass. He speaks to me everywhere. It is indeed true that God speaks to us through creation. I do want to put an important caveat here, though. I don't think that Reverend Babcock, as a good Presbyterian minister, would have been okay with the modern American sentiment that says, I worship God out in nature, so I don't have to belong to a church. But he would have at least agreed with the idea that God is to be found in the beauty of God's creation. You see, worship of God begins here on Sunday mornings, when we gather together in our ancient and ever-changing rituals of song, sermon, and prayer. That's where worship begins. But then worship of God continues throughout the week when we carry our praises of God out into the world that God made. And when we recognize and appreciate the songs of the birds, the trees, the flowers, the fields, and the mountains in the desert, all of which are worshiping their creator too. This is my father's world. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This is my Father's world. Why should my heart be sad? The Lord is King. Let the heavens ring. God reigns. Let the earth 
be glad. Happy Father's Day, First Presbyterian Church. May your worship, may your songs of praise and the songs of all creation bring joy to your heavenly Father this day and all of your days upon this earth. Let us pray. Lord God, so much that you have created in this world, in this universe, is beyond the conception of our imagination, is staggering in its grandeur and beauty. And yet you call us to appreciate and recognize the small things as well as the grandiose things. Help us to appreciate this world that you've created. Help us to see that appreciation and to give that appreciation as our worship of you. Help us also in our worship to reach out to others in our community, in our family, in our world, because worshiping you is something that we do as a community. Help us to sing in our hearts, with our voices, with our neighbors, with our friends, our family, with everyone. Help us to raise those carols to you. Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of worship, even as we give what we have to you as an act of thanks and praise. We pray all these things just as you taught us to pray, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. At this time, I'd like to share some announcements with you about things that are happening in the life of our church and community and ways in which you can participate. The first announcement is a transition. Um, as I mentioned in the sermon, we've been trying all sorts of things, and uh, one of the things that worked for us early on when we were worshiping online only was Zoom. Uh, and now that we are coming back into the sanctuary, we still want to include people who cannot come to the sanctuary uh, as well as those are here, but Zoom may not be the best way to do that, so we are transitioning away from that, and starting next Sunday, we are going to be using Facebook Live or YouTube Live as our vehicle for streaming. We think that will solve some of our technical issues that we've been having and make for a better experience for those who are participating online as well as for those who are here. So um, please uh, look out for uh, information and details in our church newsletter. If you've not subscribed to that, let us know in whatever way uh, works best for you and we will get you signed up. Um, you can also look on our webpage, which is firstpresbyterian.church, uh, or you can uh, look on our Facebook page and there should be more information posted uh, about where you can log in to our worship services next week if you're watching online. But we're not going to be using Zoom uh, from this time on. Second announcement is wanted to say thank you once again to those who have continued to support the church financially throughout all this time. There are several ways in which you can contribute to the ministries and the message of First Presbyterian Church. One of those is on our website, firstpresbyterian.church. There are instructions there for online giving. Uh, another is if you have a smartphone and you use the Venmo app, you can uh, send us contributions that way. And uh, there's information on our screens, on your screens. 
And then if those, uh, for those of you who are here in the building, we are not going to pass the offering plates, but we do still have the offering plates. They are on the two tables in the narthex. So as you leave, if you would like to put something in the offering plates, you may do so. And we are, as always, thankful for the gifts that are given to support the work that we do, regardless of what medium you use to give. Another way that you can give and contribute to our church is by supporting an Eagle Scout project. Uh, Jacob Halter, who plays in our praise band and is also in, he's a church member, and he is a member of the troop, the Boy Scout troop that our church sponsors. He is putting together a project that is going to build a sound station in our sanctuary that will tie together all of our different technologies that we're using uh, to record and do everything else. I think Jacob has raised of his targeted $2,000. He's raised about a thousand of that. And so thank you to everyone who has contributed, who has given, but please don't stop. Uh, we still have a thousand more to go and we would love to get his project done uh, and fully funded before the end of the summer. That would be a great help to him and it would be a great benefit to us as we head into the school year. So if you'd like to contribute to Jacob Halter's Eagle Scout project, you can do that in any of the ways that you ordinarily contribute to the church. Just make sure that you note that it is for the Eagle Scout project or for Jacob Halter's project. And we will make sure that those funds uh, get where they need to go. Our friends, the Libra Institute, who we have partnered with several times, are hosting a grassroots leadership academy starting on July 7 and July 9. If you would like to learn how to be more engaged in your community in productive ways, how to, um, how to influence decisions that are made in your community, this is a good program to start you down that path, and it's a certification process that comes along with it. You can read more information about it in our online newsletter or on our church website website and if you have any questions you can contact one of our church members and our church trustee Carla Sierra who can help you with that. We need volunteers still uh, for people to be scripture readers, worship leaders via video to record uh, prayers, announcements, scripture readings, and the chiming of the hour. Um, that can be those of you who are watching from home. It can also be those of you who are here in the sanctuary. You can still volunteer to do that and pre-record something that we'll then use in the service. Uh, but we're trying to do that as a way to be as inclusive as we can and to, to do exactly what I talked about in the sermon today, to allow people in our congregation to help not just watch the worship but to participate in the worship and to help others create that worship if you would like to volunteer to record any of our worship videos please let me know you can do that in the chat you can do that by sending a, a message or an email to the church or even just uh, letting me know if you're here in the, the building uh, after the worship service and finally oh wait i forgot one announcement before we get to the birthdays i need to talk about wandering calvin um, some of you who have kids may have or may remember my my uh, puppet friend Calvin the camel, and so we have uh, we have this is not Calvin the the puppet camel, but this is wandering Calvin, or you might call him uh, if any of you have ever done flat Stanley. This is flat Calvin. And we are going to be mailing Wandering Calvin. He's going to wander around to the families in our community. And uh, we're hoping that some of our families, some of our, our, our church members will take pictures with themselves and Calvin uh, in interesting uh, places or things, even if it's just doing something fun in your backyard or in your house. But uh, we hope that you'll host Calvin for a little while and then pass those pictures on to us. Basically, this is just a neat way for us to get to know each other a little bit Bit better and kind of share in, in each other's lives and stay connected in a time when we are um, all trying to, to do exactly that. So uh, if you, you, some of you may unexpectedly receive flat Calvin, wandering Calvin in the mail with some instructions. If you would like to be on that list, if you know that you would like to host uh, wandering Calvin in your home, then please uh, let us know. Uh, put a message in the comments, in the chat, and we will add you to the mailing list, and, and he'll show up uh, at your home in a, a week in the not-too-distant future. That's Wandering Calvin. 
And then finally, we want to wish a happy birthday to the following people who are celebrating this week, to Gavin Sanders, to Jennifer Delgado, Jackie Okan, Jimmy Salome, and Iris Ritana. If you know any of these folks, if you see them, drop them an email, a text message, something, say happy birthday and let them know how much we appreciate them being part of this faith community. At this time, we are going to join in singing our closing song together. That song is the one that I talked about in our sermon, the famous hymn, This Is My Father's World, which is based on Psalm 96. Please remain seated, but join us together. Raise your voices so that you can actually say that you worshiped God today and help us sing, This Is My Father's World. One, two, one, two, ready, go. Happy Father's Day, First Presbyterian Church, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon each and every one of you and grant you peace. 
Amen. Go in peace.